Welcome everyone to this Daniel 11 verse by verse exposition. Today we are going to be covering verse 2. You're not going to want to miss this, so be sure to grab yourself a pen and a notebook or some paper. This is going to be a very interesting and fascinating historical teaching on Daniel 11 verse 2. There are several facets to this particular verse and we will be going over each facet in language that will be very easy to understand. So get ready and enjoy. Please do not listen to or watch this presentation if you have not listened to or watched verse 1 first. Now we're going to pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day that you've blessed us with. As we come before you, first of all, Lord, we just want to ask that you forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Please send your Holy Spirit to be with us. Give us understanding as we read these verses one by one. Please send your holy angels to be with us, protect us, and guide us. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Daniel chapter 11, verse 2. And now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all, and by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia. So I told you there were several facets. We're going to be covering over what is truth. We're going to be learning who these three kings are, and then who this fourth king is. So, the truth means the literal interpretation. In Daniel 7, 15 through 16, we're told, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. So Daniel had visions that troubled him. He didn't understand them. They were symbolical. So he comes to Gabriel and he asks him, what is the truth of all this? What does this really mean? So he told him and made him know the interpretation. So the truth is the literal interpretation. Instead of saying horns, he says kings. Instead of saying beasts, he'll refer to kingdoms. This is the kind of language that's being used. We now enter upon a prophecy of future events, clothed not in figures and symbols, as in the visions of chapter 2, 7, and 8, but given mostly in plain language. You might find a symbolical word, a, a figurative word or two in Daniel 11, but it's mostly in plain language. Many of the signal events of the world's history from the days of Daniel to the end of the world are here brought to view. This prophecy, says Bishop Newton, may not improperly be said to be a comment and explanation of the vision of chapter 8. So Daniel 11 is explaining Daniel chapter 8, specifically dealing with verses, I believe, 1 through 7 or 8. Uriah Smith says Daniel 11 is a literal prophecy. And here's the link to his correct edition of the 1897 book. Remember, Daniel and the Revelation 1897 correct edition is the book the prophet highly endorses. And if you watch the preliminary, you would have read the quote. And she says, we all must read to clearly understand the first, second, and third angel's messages and the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. She also says to read his book, the correct edition, so that Christ doesn't come to us as a thief in the night. She says, if there are any mistakes in this book, they are only minor mistakes. And you can read about that in 10 Manuscript Release, page 49 to 50. Here is a picture of Daniel 11 from that correct 1897 edition. You can enlarge this picture, but if you see here, it says this is a literal prophecy. This is the chapter title 
of Daniel chapter 11 from the correct 1897 edition called Daniel and the Revelation written by Uriah Smith. Sister White also endorsed Bible readings for the home 1888 edition. She says, I do not demerit Bible readings. It is a book which will do a great amount of good, but it can never take the place that the Lord designed that volume four, the great controversy, should have in the world and among our people. This is from Publishing Ministry, page 355, paragraph two. And notice this was written in 1889. This is regarding the 1888 edition. This book was being pushed ahead by the leaders of the church it was being pushed ahead of great controversy and other books. Sister White said it was a great book, but it was not supposed to take the place of the great controversy. This book, 1888 Bible Readings for the Home, was written by several men who came together to bring our truths before the church. This book was being pushed by the leaders of the day. It was even taking the place of the great controversy which the prophet said was not to be done. But she said that book would do a great work. If you go to the 1888 Bible readings for the home, which I actually have my own physical copy in my library, under the chapter on Daniel 11, titled The Eastern Question, it says that this is a literal chapter, that Daniel 11 is a literal chapter. And there's the link, copy and paste that link, and then you can read, and we'll be looking at it on the next slide. Here's a picture of the 1888 Bible readings for the home, saying Daniel 11 is a literal chapter. And you can enlarge this picture. It says the 11th chapter of Daniel entire is a literal historical prophecy. So the whole chapter of Daniel 11 is literal and it's the longest and most remarkable of its kind in all the scriptures. Some people say, but wait a minute, I thought the time prophecies were the longest. No, but this is not a time prophecy, but this is the longest prophecy in the Bible. In verse 1, starting in the days of Darius, the king of Media, and going all the way down to Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, to the second coming, or excuse me, to the close of probation and so although this is not a time prophecy it is the longest prophecy in the Bible now going on to the rest of verse 2 the four kings mentioned in verse 2 are number one Cambyses this is the son of Cyrus remember Darius and Cyrus conquered Babylon Darius became the king of Media first, and Cyrus was the king of Persia. But when Darius died, Cyrus became the king of Media and Persia. Then Cyrus had a son named Cambyses. He was next on the scene. The victory was finally gained, and the forces of the enemy were held in check all the days of Cyrus, who reigned for seven years, and all the days of his son Cambyses, who reigned about seven years and a half. And that's in TA 145, paragraph 1. Number 2, the second king is Smerdes the imposter. Cambyses had a son named Smerdes, but this guy who was reigning, he was the Smerdes imposter. He's also called the false Smerdes. He's also known as pseudo Smerdes. He's also known as Artaxerxes of Ezra 4.7. This is not the Artaxerxes of Ezra 6.14 that made the final decree in 457 B.C. So there's two Artaxerxes in the book of Ezra. The Artaxerxes in Ezra 4.7 is the false Smerdes, and the Artaxerxes in Ezra 6.14 and chapter 7 verse 7, that is the Artaxerxes that made the final decree for the building of Jerusalem. During the reign of Cambyses, the work on the temple progressed slowly. And during the reign of the false Smerdes, called Artaxerxes in Ezra 4.7, the Samaritans induced the unscrupulous imposter to a issue decree forbidding the Jews to rebuild their temple and city. Cambyses was slain while in Egypt, and before the report was circulated, 
throughout the Medo-Persian Empire. An impostor took the throne which belonged to Smerdes, the son of Cambyses. The impostor, known in history as pseudo Smerdes, the false Smerdes, is the Artaxerxes of Ezra 4.7. He reigned but seven months, but that gave him time to consider complaints from the Samar Samaritans, tribes about Jerusalem, and to issue a commandment for the building of Jerusalem to cease until further word should come from the throne. This letter of the false Smerdes is found in Ezra chapter 4, verses 18 through 22. This is the only act which the divine historian mentions in the life of this Persian monarch. So Cyrus gives the first decree. decree. Then his son Cambyses, he's slow with the building. Then the false Smerdes, he stops the building altogether. Okay? Although very little is said about him, this false Smerdes, God knew every move he made. This is seen as we follow the history of the decree. As soon as the Jews at Jerusalem heard the reading of the letter from the false Smerdes, all work ceased. For reason they, how can we go on? After they ceased to build, God raised up two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah. And from these we gain a knowledge of how matters then went in Jerusalem. This is from story of Daniel the prophet by Stephen N. Haskell, page 165, paragraph 1 to paragraph 2. The messages delivered by Haggai and Zechariah roused the people to put forth every possible effort for the rebuilding of the temple. But as they worked, they were sadly harassed by the Samaritans and others who devised many hindrances. On one occasion, the provincial officers of the Medo-Persian realm visited Jerusalem and requested the name of the one who had authorized the restoration of the building. If at the time the Jews had not been trusting in the Lord for guidance, this inquiry might have resulted dis disastrously to them. But the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews that they could not cause them to cease till the matter came to Darius. Ezra 5.5 5. This is Darius who made the second decree for the building. And you can read about that in Ezra 6.14. The officers were answered so wisely that they decided to write a letter to Darius Hystaspes, then the ruler of Medo-Persia, directing his attention to the original decree made by Cyrus, which commanded that the house of God at Jerusalem be rebuilt, and that the expenses for the same be paid from the king's treasury. This is from Prophets and Kings, page 568, paragraph 2. So number three Darius the Persian. This is the third king mentioned in Daniel 11 verse 2. And you can read about him in Ezra 4.24. He's also known as Darius Hystaspes. This is the Darius that made the second decree of Ezra. You can read about it in Ezra 5.1 to 6.1 and 6.14. And if you go to Story of Daniel the Prophet, page 166, paragraph 2. To 167 paragraph 1 you can read about this as well. it says this is the way he worked in the city of Babylon six of the chief men of the empire suspected that the reigning king was not the rightful heir and they banded themselves together to find out forcing their way into the presence of Smerdes they recognized the imposter and slew him and Darius the chief of the band was made king this is a man in history known as Darius Hystaspes and is Darius the Persian spoken of in Ezra 4.24. And you can read the rest of this in Story of Daniel the Prophet, page 166 to 167. Darius searched for this decree. So, Cyrus gives the first decree. His son Cambyses comes on. The building slows down. Then the third king, or excuse me, the second king under Cyrus, which is the false Smerdes, he stops the building altogether. He writes a letter and has it stopped. Now Darius is on the scene. He's the third king mentioned in verse 2. This is Darius the Persian. And he is saying to, he found the decree from Cyrus, and he says, allow the rebuilding of the temple to proceed. Let it continue. Let the work of this house of God alone, he commanded. 
let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place. Moreover, Darius continued, I make a decree what ye shall do to the elders of these Jews for the building of this house of God, that of the king's goods, even of the tribute beyond the river, forthwith expenses be given unto these men, that they be not hindered, and that which they have need of, both young bullocks and rams and lambs, for the burnt offerings of the God of heaven, that they may offer sacrifices unto the God of heaven. And you can read this in Ezra chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. This is found in Prophets and Kings, page 579, paragraphs 1 and 2. The king further decreed that severe penalties be meted out to those who should in any wise alter the decree. And he closed with the remarkable statement, The God that hath caused his name to dwell there destroy all kings and people that shall put to their hand to alter and to destroy this house of God which is at Jerusalem. I, Darius, have made a decree. Let it be done with the speed. Verse 12. Thus the Lord prepared the way for the completion of the temple. Prophets and Kings, page 579, paragraph 3. In giving this history to Daniel, these details were omitted and Daniel did not live to see them carried out. To him the angel said, Speaking in the third year of the reign of Cyrus, Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. Story of Daniel the Prophet, page 170, paragraph 2. The three kings who followed Cyrus were Cambyses, who was the son of Cyrus, Pseudosmertes, who was the false Smertes, and Darius, Histaspes. Um, this was Darius the Persian. The fourth king of Persia after Cyrus the Great was noted for his wealth, and the great army he raised against the Greeks. This king was Xerxes, who came to the throne on the death of Darius in the year 486 BC. Our interest lies in the record of his dealings with the Jews, and to that history one entire book of the Bible is devoted. Xerxes is the Ahasuerus of Esther one and the book of esther is the record of the acts of this king with reference to the people of god who were still living in the kingdom of babylon over which xerxes was sole monarch so when darius the persian died the darius uh who gave the second decree found in ezra six fourteen, when he died then you have this fourth king who is rich his name is xerxes He's also known as Xerxes the Great. He's also known as Ahasuerus of the Book of Esther, which is none other than the husband of Queen Esther. So, king number four, Xerxes, also known as Ahasuerus, husband of Esther, also known as Xerxes the Great. This is not the Arctic Xerxes of Ezra 614. A lot of people think Xerxes is the abbreviation for Artaxerxes, and it is not. These are two separate kings. And remember, there's two Artaxerxes mentioned in the book of Ezra. One is referring to the false Smerdes. Artaxerxes of Ezra 614 succeeded the throne of Xerxes, Ahasuerus, and Xerxes the Great. Artaxerxes of Ezra 614 is also known as Artaxerxes I, also known as Artaxerxes Longimanus. And you can find this in Prophets and Kings, page 602, paragraph 3, to 607, paragraph 1. Be sure you're writing this down and all these details for who these four kings are. The four kings after Cyrus were, number one, Cambyses, the son of Cyrus. Number two, the false Smerdes, also known as Artaxerxes of chapter 4 of Ezra. Number three, Darius the Persian. Number four, Xerxes, also known as Ahasuerus, the husband of Esther, also known as Xerxes the Great. King number four, Xerxes, due to his riches, was able to stir up all against the realm of Grecia. The 11th chapter of Daniel is all the words of the angel. He says, also I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. And now will I show thee the truth. 
Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, Cambyses, Smyrtes, and Darius, Histaspes, and the fourth, Xerxes, the Ahasuerus of the book of Esther, shall be far richer than they are, and by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia. Xerxes led an army of five million across the Hellespont and against Greece. And this is written in 1896 by none other than A.T. Jones, who was one of the two men, he and Wagner, that gave the Righteousness by Faith message in 1888 that Sister White says was very much needed. Xerxes was the last Persian king who invaded Grecia, and the prophecy passes over the nine successors, or those who followed, of Xerxes. Artaxerxes of Ezra 6.14 and 7.7 as being the first of these nine successors, or the fifth king after Cyrus, not mentioned in Daniel 11.2, in the Persian Empire, and next introduces Alexander the Great. 1897, Daniel the Revelation by Uriah Smith. The portion in parentheses is um, giving clarification by me. Although Xerxes is the last king mentioned in the vision which Daniel saw, yet God was still holding out mercy to the Israelites, and it was during the reign of Artaxerxes Longiminus, who should be mentioned as the fifth king, the successor of Xerxes, who is the fourth king, mentioned in Daniel 11.2, that the final decree for the return of the Jews was issued. And that decree was made in 457 BC, which was the seventh year of Artaxerxes. And you can read about that in Ezra chapter 7, verses 1 through 7. And this is from Story of Daniel the Prophet by Stephen N. Haskell, page 176, paragraph 2. The end. Any questions? If so, please post in the comment section below this video. And for this to be more clear, you need to really write this down in your notebook. But this will really give you an understanding. And look up all the quotes that have been presented. So until we meet again, may the good Lord bless and keep each and every one of you. Please share this with all your friends and family, Seventh-day Adventist friends and family. God bless. Bye-bye.